Did you just pick up some boots for your dog either through Black Friday, through the holiday season sales, or you've just picked some up over the last couple of months and you're wanting to know the best way to help your dog get used to these boots so that way you can continue to go on these adventures no matter what the conditions are. If that's the case, then this is the video for you as we are gonna be going through how to acclimate your dog to their new boots. Hey, if this is the first time we're meeting, I'm Dr. Emerald from Working Canine Club, and my mission is to help you have a closer and stronger relationship with your dog so the two of you can go on more adventures. I'd like to start off by saying thank you, thank you, thank you to the Puget Sound chapter of Canine Companions for Independence. I recently moved from the Seattle area down to Phoenix and they sent me off uh, in an amazing way and they gifted me some rough wear boots. So thank you, thank you so much for this gift. I know Newport is going to love them. It's gonna allow him to go out into public even when it is hot out and not have his little paws get burnt on the pavement or if we're going on hikes and we don't have to worry about cactus and any other things that I don't even know about yet uh, because as I said, I just moved to Phoenix so I'm still learning all about it. If this sounds similar for you and your dog where your dog is needing some booties in order to continue to go on adventures, I'm gonna run through different ways that you can help your dog acclimate to their boots. One thing that I've noticed is many, many dogs can have a lot of sensitivity to equipment, which can make it a big hassle when trying to put something on them or have them wear something when they're really not used to those things. So I would really encourage you as we go through this video to be taking notes and rewatch it as you're going through. One of the biggest things that I can say that I've noticed to, to like help people and help their dogs is consistency as well as don't, just keep it simple in the beginning. You don't need to have huge long sessions with that. So if that's all you needed to hear, perfect. But if you're wanting to dive in deeper, make sure to continue watching through this video. And if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell down below so you can stay up to date with all of the new and most recent content that we are releasing from Working Canine Club. What we are doing here with Newport is I'm actually going to show you footage of what we have been working on and his first interactions with booties. He's never had anything like this on his feet before, so you're going to be able to see what it's like for his reaction and some of the things that I'm doing to help him acclimate with this. So the first thing that I'm doing is I'm just having him in what's called a cradle. This is where he is, as you can see, in between my legs. He's on his back, and I'm just going to put these booties right on. We're going to be giving him treats. I'm going to be just kind of hanging out with him for a little bit, not a super long time. Uh, what I will say is I do work with Newport in getting him used to me handling his toes, his paws. So if your dog isn't used to that, that's something that I would recommend doing first before you even try getting the booties on is just rubbing their paws, getting them used to having their paws played with. What we're gonna be doing next here is I'm gonna let Newport get up. I'm gonna let him kind of walk around for a little bit. You can see that he's getting used to this new feeling. Uh, one of the big things that I notice is that he brings his paws up a lot more because his body is trying to get used to what it is like to have something like this on his feet. So he's getting used to that feeling. I really, really like to do a lot of play in my training, in my socialization with my dog, and I would recommend that for many, many dogs. Uh, this makes it lighthearted. Your dog is gonna have a better time as they're going through and they're learning how to do um, well, a lot of different things. So if your dog is having fun, that's gonna make it a lot easier for the two of you. So if you're noticing that they're getting stressed out, they're not having fun, rethink your approach. Uh, what I'm doing with Newport is we're playing fetch. He absolutely loves fetch. He loves, I mean, he's a retriever, right? Uh, so there's no surprise there. So what I'm doing is we're actually playing this inside my place. Uh, I don't want any other distractions right now. I want to do this in a place that he is 100% comfortable with. That's really important. So I 
would do this in your home, in your apartment, if there's space to do that. That way you're not competing with a lot of different things. There's a lot of other smells, other dogs to distract your dog. They're able to just be nice and relaxed, they're able to feel comfortable while you're getting them used to these booties. I'm playing fetch with Newport. I'm having a lot of fun with him. My energy is up. You can see that his energy is up. He's bounding and leaping all over the place. I also am using treats. I wanna make sure that he really, really knows that this is something that's fun. Newport, along with loving to fetch, he loves food. He loves treats, which makes my job easier. So if your dog enjoys treats, have those out, give those treats to them as they're playing fetch, as you're playing with them. One thing that I started to do, which as soon as I started to do it, I realized maybe I was getting ahead of myself, but I asked Newport to do a sit, I asked him to do a down and to heal. I wanted to see if he would do any of these commands and he was a little bit confused. He, he is usually very, very precise, really fast on doing these commands, but I changed it up on him. I all of a sudden had these booties on and I was asking him to do commands, which was a little bit of a stretch. He wasn't used to doing that. And as I've talked before in other videos and other courses, when you change one thing with your dog, that changes a lot of other things for them. And so you wanna take a couple of steps back. So I was realizing this, I wanted to then simplify things. I wanted to slow it down so that he was able to be successful. I didn't wanna add an extra stress to these type of things. He also, um, I was noticing that he was sliding back as he was doing his sit because there was a different grip on his paws when he was navigating those positions. So I also wanted to be aware that his sensation for his body and his proprioception or where his body in, is in space is different. There are different, a lot of different things happening here and don't be surprised if you ask your dog to do commands that they're not gonna be able to do them, they're not sure if what you're asking them to do is the right thing. So be aware of that. Now, I this whole session was about five, maybe 10 minutes long. I kept it nice and short. I had just kind of a fun playtime, and then I let him do a release, which means that he can kind of do whatever he wants. Um, I didn't want him to feel like he had to continue to play fetch right then. I wanted him to get used to things and I actually allowed him to race around inside the house, which I don't normally do and I don't normally recommend, but I felt like this was kind of a special situation. This was a special circumstance that he was totally getting, to, getting something um, that he wasn't used to, so I really wanted him to get some of that energy and that trepidation out of his system, so I didn't want to kind of uh, tell him that he wasn't able to do that for this particular time. I know I was kind of bending some rules there as far as consistency goes, but I felt in this case it was better to do that so that he had an overall positive experience. He was able to have the zoomies. He was able to really feel what those booties felt like as he was racing around. One thing I do want to note is you want to make sure that these are fitted properly on your dog. You want to make sure that you have the right fit. And in another video, I'll do a review of what I think of these booties as well as I can do a video on how to make sure that you've got the right fit for your dog. I actually decided to get two different size booties for Newport. I got a size for his two front paws and then I got a smaller size for his back paws because they were a, a decent amount smaller. Uh, than his front paws, so I wanted to get two different sizes so that they fit the best and they were able to stay on properly. I thought this was actually a really good call because his hind booties, actually one of them got twisted around a little bit because they were still a little bit too big. I purposely got just ever so slightly larger pair because he's still growing. He's only nine months and I expect him to continue to grow and I didn't want these booties to be too small, too fast. Be aware that you wanna make sure that these are on snug because if they start to twist around, they start to ride up or get off their pod, they can hurt themselves. So you wanna make sure that they're secure. They do have products like socks, which can add some extra thickness around their paw to help keep the booty snug. The other thing that I would recommend is only have these on when you're around. Don't just put these on your dog's paws and then walk out the other room. Uh, this is the second dog that I put booties on and they both were pulling at the Velcro and trying to pull them off their paws 
um, initially because they're different, they aren't sure about them, and you know, they're kind of like, oh, I would rather not have these on. So if you have these booties on, make sure that you're there so they're not chewing on them, they're not gonna get destroyed from them ripping and pulling at them. That's a big thing. I mean, these are investments, they aren't just a couple of bucks. The big things as I'm just a recap here is keep it short, keep it simple, and make it fun. Those are really, really big things. You wanna play a game with your dog, have lots of treats, and make the experience enjoyable for them. You also don't wanna have this initially a really long amount of time. Five, 10 minutes is more than enough. And then take them off for the rest of the day. The next day, come back, put them back on for another five, 10 minutes, play around, and just continue to work on that so your dog gets used to it, they're comfortable with these equipment on and if they are having any sensitivity with their paws you can always just massage your dog's paws for a while as well you want to make sure that you have the right fitting for your dog's paw so that they don't get twisted around they don't come off or anything i actually have had a boot come off of the dog's paw before and i almost lost it luckily i saw it and i didn't have to worry about that and finally make sure that you are around when you have these on your dogs don't put them on put them in their kennel or leave the room because that does leave the opportunity for them to chew on them try to pull them off and then all of a sudden you're out you know 20 or 50 bucks which it would be a real bummer so i hope that you were able to get a lot of value from this and that it was able to help you and your dog start working on having this type of equipment on so that you're able to go out on more adventures. I would love to know what type of adventures you have planned for your dog with these booties and comment down below and let me know. If you found value, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to keep up to date on all of our newest videos. I'm Dr. Emerald with Working Canine Club and I will see you all later. Bye.